The Little Eggs Collective are a terrific independent theatre company based in Sydney. Their work takes familiar stories and remakes them to interrogate contemporary global issues. They've looked at fascism with their version of Pinocchio and climate change with their version of the rhyme of the ancient mariner. In Symphony Fantastique, they take on Hector Berlioz's program symphony of the same name, originally written in 1830, that tells the story of a gifted artist who overdoses on opium in the depths of despair over an unrequited love. The story Berlioz tells echoes his own ill-fated obsession with the actor Harriet Smithson. Leonard Bernstein once described it as the first musical exploration of psychedelia, saying Berlioz tells it like it is, you take a trip and you wind up screaming at your own funeral. So that sounds fun. It's not totally clear from the Little Eggs production what global issue they're exploring with this particular adaption. It's a queer story, sure, but it seems more focused on the troubles of the genius artist, which to me always smacks of entitlement and arrogance, just another version of the great man theory of history. Nevertheless, this production is visually and orally stunning. This production, filmed originally at the King's Cross Theatre in February, and now available as part of Sydney Fringe's digital Essence of Fringe season, opens with gorgeous, angelic voices, beginning the show with a choral opening that pairs powerful, complex harmonies with clever use of dance and movement to introduce the conductor, played by L.J. Wilson. The conductor is rehearsing with the chorus, stopping them and making them repeat, testing out each voice, each harmony, individually, with the hard jawline of a demanding maestro. One singer, I think played by Cassie Hamilton, it's hard to tell from the photos of the program notes, is singled out, and this is Little Egg's version of Smithson. Her voice is more hesitant at the beginning and she's made to repeat her part on her own, but is then joined by the conductor who is clearly enamored with her. There's menace in the air as they sing together and the conductor moves to kiss her, but with a sharp, shocked intake of breath, the chanteuse runs off stage and the great man is rejected. There then follows the conductor's Dantean descent into excess and madness. After nightmare scenes of nightclubs and parties, it seems like the composer ends up sleeping in a barn, only to be woken up by what I think is a cow and two farmers. And I kind of wish that all cowboys and farmers dressed like this. This is maybe my favourite part of the show, especially when the cows start singing along. The conductor tries to teach the cows to sing, which makes me wonder, are they equating the chorus with cows? That the maestro treats their artists like cattle? There's so few words in this show, so I suppose it's very open to interpretation. The text is mostly limited to yes, no, thank you, and monosyllabic songs, mostly consisting of da, as well as the French sung and spoken in the farmyard section. Some pre-recorded quotes play early on, giving us the context of Berlioz's Symphony Fantastique, but for the most part the narrative hovers in the air, restless and hard to get at. Beautiful imagery and gorgeous song, but a little light on story. It reminds me of the Plague Dancers presented by Four Larks back in 2012 at the Malt House, though that had a script by Marcel Dorney, so the storytelling was more present, if not entirely balanced with the operatic aspect. Here there's movement and stunning lighting and a blend of electronic dance music with orchestral remixes, but there's little dialogue or exposition. The costume for the chorus gives the player its aesthetic, but still doesn't ground the story or the world. It looks good, well, it looks fetishy, but it doesn't tell you very much about who these people are or where or when. It just sort of seems nightclubby. And I mean, that's fine. Non-diegetic design is fine. But in the absence of much text, it lacks specificity, which is why the whole thing feels a bit weightless to me. The production values are a little lower on the filming of this than I usually like. There's some blurriness, which is probably due to the very low light. But there is some innovative camera use, including a bird's eye shot during the composer's insomnia, achieved by filming their reflection in the shiny, shiny floor. Symphony Fantastique is very beautiful to look at and to listen to, even if the scant story makes the narrative, such as it is, seem a little generic. Oh, there's also a very high-pitched note just after the fan dance that isn't super fun through headphones. So, you know, heads up there.